So let's move on and we go into packages and patches. And what we're going to do now is fetch all the packages. So it's all the, all the tarballs, all the compressed packages with all the source that's required for building Linux from scratch. So bear in mind that we're not installing any binaries in the final Linux from scratch system. We're building everything from source, source code. And that includes the temporary Linux from scratch system. The intermediate system will be built from, built from uh, source code as well. So what we end up with is a, a fully customized, fully uh, hand-built um, Linux system. Uh, so when we go through these pages, because uh, I've read this book so many times before, I won't be reading it all, but I'll, I may stop every now and then to just read something that looks different to me, because obviously the, the book's changing over time. Each, each version there's some different changes made. Um, so I may just sort of stop and quickly read through it uh, and if it's important I'll read through it uh, aloud just to highlight the fact that there's something important that needs to be taken note of um, but generally um, all we need to do is just copy and paste commands um, if this is your first time or if you've only built Linux from scratch a few times before it's worth reading the book from beginning to end just to get acquainted with the process, um, especially the earlier chapters. Um, don't go blindly copying and pasting commands like you'll see me do. You won't learn very much from it at all. Um, if you read everything first, maybe once or twice even, before you actually sit down in the terminal to do commands, you'll learn a lot more uh, than just coming straight into chapter, chapter three. Uh, and copying and pasting commands. Um, and in fact, if you get the chance to build Linux from scratch on another computer, and you've got, you know, maybe a couple or several computers, it's worth choosing the slowest one and building on the slowest one and taking time, um, because the machine will take longer to process the commands. It will give you more time to read the text surrounding the commands you're typing in to contemplate what has been written and what it means, what it really means. Um, it's too easy to read things quickly and assume it means one thing when in fact it means something else. So um, that's probably a tip if you've got access to several machines. I would, I would choose the, the slower one if you can. And be, be a bit patient with it as well. So we're going to create now a directory called sources within the MNT LFS directory. And that's what that command does. You can see it's created that directory there. And then what we're going to do is change the um, attribute or permissions for that directory so that the owner is the only one that can delete the direct uh, the files within that directory. It's called a sticky sticky uh, attribute. And now we're going to download. Um, the actual tarballs. We use w, a command called wget to do this. Now the the um, Linux from scratch team conveniently created a list of all the files and the locations to download all the files. So we don't have to download them individually, and we can use wget to automate the download. So what we can do here is to copy this link and uh, well, sorry. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that link has got is a link to a file uh, which has a list of all the file the file locations. So, first of all, if we go into LFS, you can see within the LFS directory, and you can see there's the sources directory. Let's go into the sources directory, and we're going to get that file now. So I've highlighted. Oh, sorry, I've right clicked that link, and done copy. Sorry, not copy copy link. Now if I center click there's that link that I've just copied and what that wget command will do is just fetch that file and we can look at that file. Let's use less. wget list and what you can see here each line is a URL to the tarball, a direct link to each um, tarball that is needed to build Linux from scratch. 
and then if we go back to the book they've got a command here which is used to um, pass that file that we just downloaded and get each file at uh, each table so if we paste that command in and press enter it will process that file it will extract each location and as you can see it's downloading each individual file as it goes through so this depending on your uh, internet speed take maybe two or three minutes it might be less than that if you've got a really fast uh, internet connection so that we'll just wait for that to happen uh, to finish uh, while that's going on just explain the next part there's another file here called md 5 sums and it's similar to this wget list file in that it's got a list of all the tarballs but it's got um, the md5 signature next to each file name rather than the URL to fetch them and using this command here we can just validate um, each file that was downloaded to prove that um, it's been downloaded a it's been downloaded correctly and B it hasn't been tampered with um, at the distant end so we'll do that when this download is finished and bear in mind this um, is going on to the hard disk so if if you uh, do want to stop or you have a power cut or accidentally pull the plug or something these files are going on the disk they will remain it's the environment part that will need to be set up again um, for example the LFS variable is what will need to be set up um, as well as the next bit where we're going to be setting up an LFS user because that becomes part of the live environment system but certainly you won't need to download these files again so the GCC is one of the bigger packages to download the other ones the Linux kernel um, the other ones are quite small so just give this a, a few more minutes to finish downloading and you'll see that some of these aren't downloading particularly fast it obviously depends where they're coming from um, the servers that are serving these files up could be under heavy use or the link into the server may be um, quite slow you can see this one speeding up here it started off at 700k so it could be my end it could be the far end or indeed somewhere in between Okay, that's a bit unfortunate. It looks like the internet might have dropped there.
Right, so unfortunately that was my end. My internet decided it was inconvenient to me to drop out at the moment. At that moment, so um, now I could wait for this to. It will retry, but I think it takes ten minutes or so. So I'm going to try and see what happens if I abandon that with Control C. Um, Yes, it's got continue flag there, so um, I'm hoping it will continue where it left off. Yeah, it looks like it's um, skipping the ones that I've already downloaded. And hopefully it will continue with Grub2 where it got interrupted. And this is why it's good to um, do the MD5 check as we'll be doing after the downloads because that Grub2, it may not continue correctly and yeah, it has continued that, so that's good. Um, but the MD5 sum will validate whether that um, continuation of the download has actually worked or not. <clears throat> so yeah, that, that was a lot quicker than waiting for WGET to recognize that there was a delay and reconnect. Like I said, I think the delay is 10 minutes or so, so it was worth abandoning that and letting that carry on with a retry. So this is the other huge package. Um, I said that the ones after this should be a lot smaller. So it shouldn't be much more than a minute or so to finish the downloads. <coughs> Okay, that's it. So it's downloaded all the packages, and as you can see, it's um, also downloaded all the patches that are required for this build as well. So now let's get hold of this link for the MD5 sums. Type in wget again, center paste, fetch that file again. If I show you on the screen what's in that file, you can see it's just the standard MD5 sum checksum file with the signature and the file name. <clears throat> so we can just copy these commands now, paste them in, and you can see there's no errors reported at the end of that and each file each file name's got an OK next to it. So we know that every single um, tarball and patch file has been downloaded successfully, including that Grub2 where the um, internet was interrupted. Uh, where is it? There it is there. Grub2.06. So that's good. We know that we've got a, a full set of 
uh, packages to work from. You can see it's about 450 megabytes we've just downloaded. Uh, so then there's a list of all the packages and the download locations. So if you do have a problem with a particular package, if it's not downloading or it's not checksumming correctly, then you can either try the direct link from the, the book um, or what sometimes happens, these versions get updated and they delete the older version or move them. Or you can go to the home page uh, to try and track it down yourself. Failing that, as a last resort, um, there's a mirror at the Oregon State University FTP website. Uh, if you type in something like that, that should get you to it. Yes, there it is there. Um, so that's ftp.osuosl.org forward slash pub. And then if you look for... Yeah, there it is there, Linux from scratch. And go into Linux from scratch packages, and then you can see there's all old versions here, but obviously we're on 11.0. You can see there's um, a mirror repository of all the files that we've just downloaded, so you could, you could um, get it from there um, if you're having problems uh, with the script itself or the links within the scripts. Uh, same thing with the next part, it's a list of all the patches, same thing, there's a direct link to get them there. They should be on here, yes they are, there's the bin utils one, so that's everything in there is everything you need in, in that one directory.